What is Qrinko? How do I put it on a chart? And what do the settings mean? I'm Austin with QuantView, and I'm going to show you just that. So I have a blank chart here. We have one minute candlesticks on it. This is an RTY chart. I'm using RTY because RTY has 10 ticks per point, and it's going to make it easier for us to uh, show all the uh, Qrinko settings and what they all do. So how do we get Qrinko onto your chart? We're going to go up to the top and we're going to hit data series. So data series, we're going to look at type. We're going to click the little down selector box and we're going to go to the bottom where it says Qrinko and I'm going to click on that. So these are the parameters that we can set to make Qrinko look different. So for our purposes, we're going to put in 10 for shift. We're going to put in 20 for offset. And we're going to put in 40 for range. Now I don't use these settings to trade with. I'm just using these to make it easier to show what all of the different settings do for Qrinko. So what do they mean? So first, let's go back to the data series here. We have shift and we put in 10 for shift. So what is shift? Sh uh, shift for a downtrend, I'm gonna pull up the measurement tool here. For downtrend, shift is the measurement from the bottom of a bar to the bottom of the next bar, and this is a downtrend. So we have 10 ticks between the bottom of this bar to the bottom of that bar. That is your shift. Well, what about an uptrend? So for an uptrend, we measure from the top of a bar to the top of the next bar. And there is another 10 ticks. So that is our tick shift. So the next, the next parameter that we have here, oh, wrong window. The next parameter that we have is offset and we put in 20. So what is offset? Offset, let's pull up my measurement tool here again. Offset is the measurement from the bottom of a down bar to the top of the next one. And this is 20 ticks. And that is what we put in. So what about an uptrend? Uptrend, we measure from the top of a bar to the bottom of the next bar. And that again is 20 ticks. So let's go back to our data series. And our last value here, our range or our, our reversal range, pull up the measurement tool again for a reversal to the upside will be measuring from the bottom of the red bar to the top of the green bar. Remember we put in 40 ticks, so that's where we get the 40. Pull up the measurement tool again, and this time we'll do a reversal to the downside. So we will measure from the top of the green bar to the bottom of the red bar. And again, there's our 40 ticks. Now, reversal bars also show tails. And the only reason that they show the tails is that they want to show where the price actually moved before it closed this bar. So we can see that it got a little bit above the, the top of this green bar, but it didn't make it all the way to the shift range, or there are shift settings, so it didn't print that bar. Instead, it reversed and went down and hit the bottom of the the range, so it printed us a red bar. So what settings do I use to trade typically? Um, for MNQ, we'll switch to an MNQ chart here. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go down to micros, and then I'm going to go to MNQ. And then for MNQ, let's pop in some new values. So for shift, I typically use as a baseline seven. For offset, I use 11. And for uh, range, I use 33. So this will give you a pretty decent Qrinko bar for MNQ. Uh, it's, it's kind of the baseline. It's not really fast and it's not really slow. It gives you some nice ranges to work with. Um, now for my algorithms, my automated trading, I typically don't use 711.33. I use a, um, I have a lot of, um, a lot of performance, really good performance with 10, 10, and 30 or 35, depending on which one you're using. 
So this kind of, it really just shows the big trends. It doesn't, it kind of shows the consolidation all in one spot. It doesn't give you some big runs in there. It makes it easier for you to figure out where it's going and how it's, how it's going to react. Um, so I will use this whenever I don't want to deal with chop. This is a good way to do that. Um, my algorithms work very well with this setting. Uh, for a faster setting for my faster algorithms, I will use a setting of three or and seven and then 14. Now this is going to move very fast. Now the consolidation, you can see that it shows a lot more movement in there. Um, when we're using other quant view indicators, uh, that's going to make it easier for us to get the really, the micro trends, something very quick. We're quick in and out. Uh, so that's pretty much the Q Rinko bar type. Uh, I will pop in some of the, uh, the default or baseline values that I use for a few tickers. I'll put that into the Ninja trading channel in the, uh, the pro, the pro area on the Discord server. If you are not a member of QuantView, you wanna head over to the quantview.io website and you wanna sign up for this seven day trial. You get to use all of the QuantView uh, indicators and strategies for seven days free of charge. We'll hope to see you there, thanks.